As we close on this wonderful year for gaming, we cap off on another Game Awards, and it was a pretty solid show. Did anything announced get you excited or disappointed? Are you happy with what won? Are you sad about what lost? Let me know down below. From an announcement standpoint, there was nothing that made me lose my mind, but I was never bored during the show, which is kind of rare for Keeley events. I find the middle section for a lot of these events kind of boring, and I don't know if it was because I was live streaming it and my chat was pretty active, but I didn't end up hating any of the trailers. Or was just wishing it would end. And as for what caught my eye, I haven't played Brothers A Tale of Two Sons. Something about it never really interested me. And I'm a big fan of Joseph Ferris and his other games. So I can see myself playing this with a buddy as soon as it drops on Game Pass. Pony Island 2 looks super interesting. Although I have to admit, a lot of that interest comes from the Inscription team developing it. If you take that dev team and have them making a game in a genre that's more down my alley, I'm down. 2025 though? I'm going to forget about this game. The new Persona 3 Reload trailer was a trailer. We're so close to the launch of this and it's a very by the numbers remake. So the trailer's only purpose is to remind people that this game exists. They can't really throw anything exciting in it that people don't already know about. World of Goo 2 is actually insane. I haven't played the first one, but I've always heard it's the best WiiWare game. Granted, it doesn't have a whole lot of competition in that department, but I think it still earns that title. People really hyped it up back in the day and actually seeing a new one is very unexpected. I can see myself picking this up when I'm in the mood for a good puzzle game. After seeing the second trailer for Metaphor, I feel like I don't have the best grasp on what this game is yet and I think that's for the better. I don't remember the last time Atlas put this much effort behind a new IP and the idea of them doing something new is very intriguing. So I'm alright with not really getting what's happening in these trailers. No spoilers please. After Metaphor, we started getting the major awards and I do have some complaints with how they handled them, but I'll save that until later. Exodus is a game I'm pretty down for exclusively because it's sci-fi. Well, as down as I can be for only getting a CG trailer. I'm just down bad for sci-fi games, so whenever something is set in space, I'm down. Who knows if it will be good or why they have the guy from the Lincoln commercials in it, but it is in space, so they might get my money. Big Walk might be one of the weirdest games Keeley's ever shown off. I'm not really sure what it is, but there's a solid dev team behind it, and it looks pretty funny. This will either flop or be massive. There's no middle ground here. The Hellblade 2 trailer didn't really spark a lot of excitement inside of me, but that could be because I've never played the first one. Ninja Theory has been cooking for so long with this game, and it's finally around the corner. I really hope their hard work pays off. Alan Wake 2 won best narrative, which is the correct choice. Kamuri looks like a very cool concept, but this trailer was definitely selling you on the idea of it, not the game. So ultimately, I don't know what this game is going to be like. New franchises are always good for the industry though. Sega's big announcement wasn't whatever the hell the super game is, but a series of remakes of classic games. We got five announced and the promise for more, and I'm pretty excited for two of them. I really hope the Jet Set Radio one does well. It would be super cool if that series came back. I have a feeling Sega's using these remakes to test the waters. Like if the Shinobi remake does well. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a brand new game. And the trailer said there are more remakes coming, so I just hope that means we're finally getting that rumored Sonic Adventure 1 remake. Out of all the Square Enix series I was expecting to see at the Game Awards, Mana was not up there, bud. It's a series that's never truly gotten the love it deserves, including from me. I've never played one, but but I've heard wonderful things. The OD trailer was more so hyping up Kojima and Jordan Peele than the actual game, but as someone who didn't get into Death Stranding and is waiting for Kojima to make a spooky game, this could be exactly what I've been waiting for. Who knows what this game is going to be though? All I know is that it's going to have people screaming at me, but so far I'm down. It's the game he's making with Xbox and I imagine it will be day one on Game Pass. The Jurassic Park game I was initially not down for, but then I realized what the premise is. Playing as an employee who was left behind after the events of the first movie is super cool. I don't know if it's just me secretly wanting a new Dino Crisis. Tales of Kenzura looked very dope. Honestly, all I need to see from this game now is the review scores after it launches. I'm in, dude. We had another look at Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and we got to see Sid for the first time, I believe. And this will be the last trailer for the game I watch. The quality of VII Remake alone is enough for me to want to get this game 
day one. And I've definitely seen enough. It's why you're looking at me right now and not the trailer. I'm not trying to look at this game again until I put it in my PS5. I'm not going to edit a part of the trailer right now. Are you kidding me? Final Fantasy 16's DLC is looking good too. They even shadow dropped one during the show. So yeah, I'll be installing that once I'm done making this video. The second part will most likely be more exciting based off of the trailers. I'm not saying the first one looks bad or anything. The other one just looked better. And FF16 won best soundtrack, which is the correct choice. The Blade game may just be a CG trailer, but Blade made by the Dishonored studio is super exciting. Last Sentinel seemed neat, but again, only because I like sci-fi. Let's hope this is something that I will actually play and not one of those trailers that look neat and I never see again, or it comes out and it's bad. The performance of Herald of Darkness is super funny to me. Not because it was bad, in fact, it was everything I wanted it to be. But imagine if all you knew about Alan Wake 2 is that it was a horror game. Then you see this during the Game Awards. You have no idea who these actors are and why that one guy who accepted the award for best narrative is dancing on stage right now. And look at the pure joy on his face, dude. The show in general made me so happy for the team at Remedy. Hello Games Light No Fire looked pretty interesting. This is one I really hope launches on Game Pass because I do want to explore those mountains. Like I actually want to spend an hour climbing one. But given No Man's Sky's launch, I'm cautious, but also given how much they've improved No Man's Sky, I'm kind of excited. The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom winning best action adventure game is the correct choice. Baldur's Gate 3 winning best RPG is also the correct choice. Best game direction going to Alan Wake 2, again, just makes me so happy. Remedy deserves the respect that they're getting at this year's Game Awards. As a longtime fan, seeing them get the recognition that they deserve is amazing. The Finals is a game a few of my buddies were bugging me to play during the beta. I didn't end up getting around to it, and you know what? It looks fun. And they shadow dropped it, so I might be playing it while you're watching this video. In fact, I started the download while I was typing my notes. Final announcement was Monster Hunter Wilds. I'm assuming it's a sequel to Monster Hunter World. All those games bleed together and you could have told me that this was already announced and I would have believed you. Heading into Game of the Year, Flute Guy popped off again. This time playing an instrument I have never seen before and I have no proof that this god of music didn't manifest it into existence minutes before the show. Along with that, we also got the best joke of the night. From the upcoming films Wonka and Dune Part 2, Please welcome YouTuber Modded Controller 360. <laughs> <laughs> and the surprise to nobody paying attention, Baldur's Gate 3 won Game of the Year. And from what I've seen and heard, it deserves it. I think it's coming to Game Pass soon, so I will be playing it shortly. So don't get mad at me for when it's not on my top 10 games of the year. Blame Microsoft for not putting it on Game Pass day one. If it lives up to the hype, I'll probably talk about it next year. But Goaty wasn't the biggest story from the Game Awards this year. In fact, nothing I mentioned really was. And luckily, it wasn't some jackass who stormed the stage to get attention. It was kind of the opposite. It was people not getting the attention they earned. Around an hour or so, into the show, this image popped up on Twitter. A sign telling people to hurry up with their speeches. And this year they did the Oscars music cue to cut people off too, which I don't remember them doing previously. I get you not wanting people to talk forever. Here's the issue though. They let Marvel actors have longer monologues than some of the devs we were allegedly celebrating. Like some of them were not given enough time. Like they even cut off one dev flat out. It got a laugh out of me because it was so messed up, but that was fucking rude and embarrassing that they didn't stop the music afterwards. I get it, you're doing giveaways and you don't want one guy to cost Valve $10,000 or whatever. But maybe instead of ruining some of these people's moments, you just have a hard cutoff time for the giveaways no matter what. Like what I was saying about feeling happy for the Alan Wake 2 team was ruined because they were trying to rush Sam Lake off stage. I don't know, maybe cut down on the monologues from random celebrities. So we're not fucking rushing the devs off the stage. Honestly, it pissed me off. That was one big story from the night. And the other one was one I didn't really notice until I uploaded a TikTok about the winners. I got a lot of comments, and I mean a lot for my standards, about how Spider-Man 2 should have won something. Hell, my buddy sent me a post from IGN talking about how Spider-Man went 7-0. and And in the same post said, well, anyways, here are the actual winners. Why would you lead an article about the winners with a game that won nothing? Instead of the game that won five awards, 
including game of the year. I still saw a lot of people saying Yuri should have won best performance. If it wasn't going to Neil Nubon, it would have gone to Ben Starr easily. I'm saying all this not because I think Spider-Man 2 is bad. It's not. It's a great game. But for every category it was nominated for, I don't believe it deserved to win. Hell, if I'm being honest, I don't think it should have been nominated for game of the year. Again, I enjoyed the game a lot, but I feel like it leaves no impact. People will be playing the five other games nominated for years to come, but I don't think Spider-Man 2 will be remembered as fondly outside of it being Spider-Man. I don't know. I just find this super interesting because this is easily the most passionate I've seen people get about Spider-Man 2 since it launched. While with the other games, people have been talking about them for months. Anyways, that was a pretty solid show. No extreme highs, but no lows. And what won awards 100% deserve to win. Easily the least amount of snubs I've seen from the game awards. I don't know if I'm actually pointing at Xenoblade 3, but let's pretend I am. This was just a fun celebration of gaming. I've always believed that the Game Awards is good for the industry, and this show proved it. Do you agree? Think I'm an idiot? Comment down below. Dislike the video if you're upset about Spider-Man 2 not winning anything, and are annoyed with my comments on it, and subscribe for more bad content. Follow me on other platforms if you want. Take care, guys.